Welcome back to Chair Shot Reality here on WrestleZone.com. I am Josh Eisenberg in my slice of heaven, I like to call it paradise. This past Tuesday on SmackDown Live, you saw a subtraction and an addition. This isn't even math class, folks, but Shane McMahon was added to the SmackDown Live Survivor Series team in place of Baron Corbin. My initial reaction was, huh? What? Shane McMahon, a guy who has only had one match in the calendar year and one match really in about eight years, is going to be added to this team of SmackDown Live superstars to compete against Raw. My first thought was that, was huh, I'm not sure, I don't understand it, but then I started to dissect it. I started to think about it a little bit more. Well, WWE isn't putting really big stipulations on the line for these Raw and SmackDown matches. Yes, you had the Dolph Ziggler, Sami Zayn interpromotional Intercontinental Championship match, and then you also have the Cruiserweight stipulation. But this match lacked something. It lacked intrigue, it lacked interest, and it lacked big names. Why did it lack big names? Because SmackDown doesn't have John Cena right now on their team. SmackDown has really good superstars and has AJ Styles and Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt, but they don't have a wow factor. They don't have a wow factor like the Raw roster does with Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins and Chris Jericho and Big Braun Strowman. So when you put these two teams together with Baron Corbin, you weren't really sold on it, but now people are interested. It spiked people's interests. So I'm interested to see how they build this match at Survivor Series, and Shane McMahon, he's fighting for his blue, blue, blue brand, right? So will they let Shane McMahon be successful? Will he stand tall? Will he be the guy that makes SmackDown win over Raw? Well, that's gonna be remain to be seen, but I'm interested now than I was before, but you gotta feel bad for Baron Corbin. If this is not an injury angle, why in the hell would you put him on the team only to take him away from the team a week later. So those are my thoughts, but guys, I wanna to toss it to you back in studio. Justin, Juice, is Shane McMahon being added means that SmackDown had no better option? Thank you, Josh, and that's an interesting question. Drew Springsteen uh, rocking his Shane O'Mac jersey. Yeah. Look at you. That only cost me 50 bucks. His big investment from uh, WrestleMania. Dallas 32. treated me well. I'll yes, take it. it did, in more ways than one. Um, so Josh is asking, Shane on the team, Baron Corbin out. Does that mean that SmackDown has no better option? Why do you pull Baron Corbin out? I don't know. I thought Baron Corbin was a good option. I thought maybe he dominates and takes some some guys out on Raw, makes them a, a case. Like Roman Reigns did a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said to you off there, is Shane, why is Shane in this match? There's nothing for him to jump off of. Uh, he's just defending. Just, I don't know. I thought Baron I, Corbin fit because on the opposite side, correct me if I'm wrong, is Braun Strowman. Exactly. So I thought there was going to be a, a big. Two new... But there's going to be a big showdown between right. the two, and now it's just. Guys, I don't know. I I can only assume that they added Shane's. They felt that maybe it, it needed some. It, actually, I don't, I'm not even say that because they're not even. It doesn't even feel as big right now. Now, granted, it's only been a couple days. We haven't got another episode of SmackDown. I think a few a few things are interesting. One, the first SmackDown, the first full SmackDown that Shane's going to have, and the last SmackDown Shane's going to have to promote that he's on the team is the same SmackDown that his last opponent's going to be on, The Undertaker. Yeah. Now, I don't know what that means, and Josh and I are going to talk about The Undertaker a little later this weekend. That's a very interesting point. But. That's that is. If you think about it, that is like what. That's just, or maybe it's just irony. But there's that. The other thing too is maybe Survivor Series. Maybe there's something that's going to happen. There's so many bodies involved that there's so much possibility for something with Shane to start brewing for a future match. Because you know he's going to have a match at one of the big upcoming ones, whether it's a Rumble or Mania. It kind of seemed like maybe Brock Lesnar at one point was a possibility. Do you, do you think so? What happens with Baron Corbin now? Now that he's out of this match. That that's that's what kind of that maybe that's the ultimate that's probably the ultimate issue with this is that Baron Corbin, uh, you know, who again is, a, is an rising star who they've and uh, after he won the Battle Royal, it seemed like he ch kind of just plateaued a little bit, but now he's been gaining a lot more since being on SmackDown. And again, we have another SmackDown I, to go unless something arises that we're not. Maybe they looked and said, "Look, we have this better opportunity with Shane I, for Shane to do this and for Corbin." And we, to do we that. both thought that there's a, a big shot that Ellsworth would have got on the team, not Shane of all people. You know, and, and, and he's still he's and he, yeah, he'll be there. Baron Corbin won't be there. He's still a mascot. Maybe Baron Corbin comes out and wipes out Ellsworth. That's... I gotta say, great. Uh, you know, and I, obviously, as I said, I don't like the four-man commentary team, but I gotta say, JBL did a tremendous. I thought it was a great commentary. You know, Ellsworth being, being compared. Why couldn't we get the San Diego Chicken, the Gobbledygook, or anybody else but James freaking Ellsworth? I, lo I love it. It's good stuff. Very how, good stuff. I mean, we'll do our we'll do our Survivor Series predictions uh, next week, obviously. But how? How much of a determining factor is Ellsworth going to be? This? He's going to get someone out, and maybe it's Jericho. I feel I'm t like he'll like end up like distracting someone. It, it, it has to be. There's no other reason he's going to be out there other than to distract someone else, to throw him off. Maybe he costs someone on the SmackDown team. And it has to be someone on the SmackDown team because obviously he's only on SmackDown. But also, I mean, it's you know we're here in Pittsburgh. This is bizarre too. 
just kind of throwing this topic in real quick before we go to Josh for NXT. Um, are you stunned by the arena here in Pittsburgh is the PPG Paints Arena? Yeah. Are you stunned by the fact that they are announcing matches the way they are? Have you seen this? The, I have the, seen it. The Roadblock pay per view is December 18th. And they've announced Rollins and Jericho. And they, and they and announced Reigns and Owens. And I'm yeah. just like, it's unusual for WWE to now not only because they like to just re, re, you know re, um, reveal that in the storyline as they go, but a lot of times the storylines can change. That's still quite That's a way the way. That's true. And, and at the bottom of the of the emails that I got that had those matches listed in them, it said cards subject to change. So maybe there's something that's going to happen, and they easily could change it. But maybe they're just trying to do something early to make sure people buy the tickets. We'll see. Uh, all right, let's wrap it up here uh, on this video. We're going to go back to Mr. Eisenberg down in Florida for his NXT in ninety. In 90, the semifinals of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic took place, and you saw Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa come this close of advancing to the finals, only to be defeated thanks to a distraction from the Revival and a pickup win against the Authors of Pain. When you looked at Sanity versus TM61, you had this fresh, unique, interesting team of Sanity with Eric Young on the sidelines rooting on his boys, but it was TM61 picking up the win in a very exciting and athletic contest. That pairs the Authors of Pain and TM61 in the finals of the Dusty Rhodes Classic that'll take place in Toronto at NXT TakeOver. But you also saw a two out of three falls match announced for the Revival, defending their NXT Tag Team Championships against DIY, Chiampo, and Johnny Gargano. But the main event was a contract signing no touching needed between Shinsuke Nakamura and Samoa Joe. You had both guys wanting to rip each other's heads off, but Samoa Joe outthinking and outsmarting the NXT Championship, bringing his own table, signing the contract, and backing away. But that did not stop the NXT Champion from attacking as Nakamura took out the security that was supposed to be for his protection via William Regal and power bombing him through a table. Impactful interesting and three feuds were built this week heading in to a takeover in toronto i am josh eisenberg stick around coming up we have so much more here on chair shot reality